Hello everyone, welcome to To Aru Talk number three. And unfortunately, we're not joined by Shiro this occasion because he's feeling under the weather. He's not feeling great, so we send our best wishes to Shiro. Hopefully he feels better soon and isn't ill. <laughs> but instead, we've got Lucas and Void Hero returning again for this week. Or this month, I should say. Welcome, guys. Yo. <coughs> Glad to be here. It's a little hey. tired. <laughs> tired? Yeah. Um, had to do a lot of late night cleaning last night, so um, basically just woke up from my eight hours sleep. Ah, uh, okay. Hopefully you get the rest you deserve soon. Oh, it's, it's, it's all good. Just, just uh, caffeine is the answer, solution. <laughs> Just get addicted like Accelerator and you're good to go. I've got my black coffee here. No sugar, no milk. Just how he likes it, because I'm not edgy. <laughs> right. Yeah, for this month, we're not going to do Genesis Testament. I know, yeah, you haven't read it. Void for a start. And Shiro isn't here either, so there's no point doing Genesis Testament with those things considered. So I thought... We're on the eve of a pretty important occasion for uh, the Tararu fandom and Index and Railgun, which is the 20th anniversary on the 10th of April. And we've also got GT10 coming out, and we've also had some Imaginary Fest news announced recently, so I'm sure you're dying to talk about that, aren't you, Void? Because you're a proper Imaginary Fest player. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with, the, with a lot of that stuff. Um... I mean, yeah, I'm very interested in some of the stuff with the Imaginary Fest, and uh, I saw in the other server, the Imaginary Fest server, that there's a lot of um, stuff that I didn't really, or a lot of characters I didn't know about that I'm learning about for the first time, and just a lot of interesting stuff like that. I'm like, ooh, this looks saucy. It's it's some more <laughs> fest. We got. You know, the idol characters, idol Toma's finally here, like, we got some good stuff. <laughs> I bet you're, like, confused at what the hell that Alistair thing is doing as an idol. <laughs> well, there's that, and then there's the cyborg. There's the, like... Oh, you Rensa, yeah, I almost forgot about Rensa. Yeah. The defensive cyborg thing that's supposed to protect the chairmans, I think. <laughs> Something like that. Of like this. Yeah. About them. Yeah, well, if I'm gonna go and say what, what Renser is all about, they basically work for I think Yakimi Hisako, who's one of the board of directors. And they can like channel level five powers. I, w I was seeing stuff about that in the server like they can grab all the level 5 powers except the 7th rank which is Gunha if I remember so yeah, I guess he's just immune because he's a gemstone <laughs> yeah or he's just too batshit crazy no one really understands it even like the own science of academy city's like nah we give up I think because yeah like you said the gemstone powers are so akin to how magic was uh, initially devised because magic was created as a response to the gemstones in the Tararu lore, which I'm making a video about at the moment, so very relevant. Uh, so yeah, I think they just give up considering the gemstone powers seem to be a lot more wacky and not based on real science, because Himigami Ice is also a gemstone with her deep blood, so yeah, not very scientific. Yeah, that makes, uh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Although, that does mean, uh, logically, that Ayana Etsu's powers could be used by, um, <laughs> by her, so that's, that's a thought. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. I, I, I can't remember exa exactly how it was phrased. Do you remember, Lucas, about Renser possibly using the number six's power back in NT7? I, I think it was mentioned that... Renza could use it, but just didn't because it wasn't combat effective. Yeah, yeah, that, that rings a bell actually. 
because yeah but when we did find out about the number six's power which i won't spoil <laughs> for people who don't know because uh, we do eventually find out well we don't know if they're if it's truthful so it could be a lie maybe we don't know but if we are to take it as fact then yeah it's not really a combative ability if that's a word that i have just made up or <laughs> changed slightly to make sense Oh yeah, people saying want, they want spoilers in the chat. Well, if you want spoilers, you can watch my like plethora of level five videos or Ihan Etsu videos, and I'm sure I mentioned it there. So check that out if you want. But yes, yeah, kind of surprising they used um, well Renser 28, like the first Renser instead of the second one, because there are two of them. <laughs> Maybe they plan to add the other one at a later date. I'm not sure. Public bought us to make a character that can use all the level five powers. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Because I saw from this Renser that they introduced into the game. I think her skill is like vector manipulation or like accelerators reflect, and then her her special is basically railgun. So, yeah, I think that gives the opportunity for like the other Renser to potentially use like meltdown or dark matter or the or so, or the other. Abilities of Accelerator, without spoiling. <laughs> That's wild. And actually, as a matter of fact, this is not necessarily tied to the news, but it is just funny because there's also the Guild War going on today. So on my phone, uh, I'm actually in a Vegetary Wars carrying my team. Because, you know... Well, at the moment? Yeah, because I got both uh, Platinum Wings and 545 to be 6-star when they came out. So, <laughs> I'm just going That's hey. unacceptable. You need to devote all your attention and focus to this. Criminal. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm focused. It's just on auto. It's you're, you, you're just so experienced with Imaginary Fest, you don't even have to, like, fully zone in on the game. You can just do whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're averaging... 7 mil damage per hit and I'm only rank you know 150 on the bosses I could chill for a bit <laughs> damn son impressive I wish I had the time and consistency to continue playing but I think the only time well I I did um and ah whether I'm gonna like like start playing it again because they introduced Idol Alistan, which was absolutely batshit insane. That was just some LSD trip. I think I tweeted that. I said, like, this is an LSD trip just seeing Alistair as an idol. I'm just like, Japan, you've gone too far. <laughs> yeah, I was but, pretty sure that he was elected on that vote, but I just didn't remember exactly who it was. I just knew Toma was on that vote. <laughs> That's all I remembered. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Idle Terma and goes I, hard with that guitar. And I, of course, voted Roberto. I want to idle Roberto, <laughs> but he at least he got added to the game. All right, I'll, I'll take that as a W. <laughs> idle Roberto would have like a shotgun guitar or a shotgun bass or something. <laughs> then explosions would just happen because he's American. Be like Sugita, I guess. But hey, I'm, I'm happy with what we got. I just also would like yeah. some more, um, honestly, um, I don't remember. I think it was NT7, the Motoharu Vigilante volume, basically. I would like mm. them to make uh, Fastuchu Mikado of that volume, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that'd be I, cool. I also just I him think with they brown hair. Work with that, and then by doing that, finally get a fast version of him because he deserves it. <laughs> he deserves yeah. A <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like, I think they could use her, uh, not not her, his infection magic as his special or skill, like the one he used against uh, Seria. And then maybe it can do, like, more damage against scientific opponents because I think magic or magicians have 
like uh, an immunity to it or they know to know how behind the infection magic so they're able to counter it but the average esper or person in academy he's not going to be able to do that that's just an idea Pretty true yeah but yeah I was, I was thinking about playing the game again because of idle allies turn and I was like hmm Nah, <laughs> it's probably going to take like Samuel Mavers for me to re-download. Well, I, I haven't deleted it actually. I say re-download it, but I I've still got it. Just not used it since the Coronzon banner, I don't think. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to take Sam Mavers for me to play it or... Yeah, I don't know. Some other form of Terma, maybe. Yeah, I also wasn't going for him in the banner, but another guy that um, I six-starred that I really like was Kiera Kagon. I was full not expecting oh, yeah, yeah. him to be alongside Platinum Wings. Okay, that's not true. I actually knew ahead of time that he was going to be in that fest because um, he was leaked before Accelerator was. Mm. So I did know he's going to be there, but I wasn't full on going for him. I, I just wanted to like obtain him by the end of that. Now I have him 6 star too, for his cool art. <laughs> With the animated snow background. And I'm like, alright, <laughs> sure, I'll work with this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's always hard getting the best characters to 6 star. You have to be really lucky. <laughs> getting them in the, in the banner. Even if you got like so many Gakotas, even if you got thousands, there's a decent chance that you'll, get, you'll just get shafted. And just get uh, cards you don't even, even want. But you do get shards to get every uh, non-fest to six stars. So there, yeah. there is a benefit to getting those uh, awful dupes. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. What did you think about uh, the Dark Matter manga characters being announced? Because I think there's going to be a, an in-game event next month. I don't know if I, yeah I think I was like meant to be for 30 years of Dengeki Dayo which is like the off the manga offshoot of Dengeki Bunko and that's being chosen as the <laughs> event to celebrate that I guess uh I don't know if Ringo will get a, like a a battle card H have you read the Dark Matter manga Void um no A after watching your timeline video I do plan on reading like half of those through while I'm getting through Old Testament halfway through volume one so I'm yeah. making progress um but yeah I, I do plan on looking into a lot more of those especially because even if I'm not the biggest you know Kikine fan I do still like him and would like to learn more about him and so I mean don't say that to Lucas that, don't say that to Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Kikine enjoy her. Well, you need to enjoy him. And the um, end game version coming. Yeah, I, I would definitely like to check it out. And honestly, it's very funny, but I also am interested in game wise, at least um, with the fest fiyama which is funny because my guild leader absolutely hates him because he misses crits all the time when he came out <laughs> so i'm like at a war with, with him and i'm like but i want to collect fiyama <laughs> he seems like a cool guy sounds like a skill issue to me it's not realistic fiyama never misses <laughs> so um yeah i am very interested in uh honestly learning more about all of the level fives um i i'm a little neutral to misaki to be honest because Ooh. i don't dislike her or hate her per se it's just i don't know the railgun series put me off to her and i think while i was reading um volume 11 of new testament i did enjoy her a lot more but I definitely think she did kind of just feel tacked on in Railgun, to be honest. So, was it the biggest fan of her in that? I think I pretty neutral, I guess. 
where I Attacks was. Attacks on a railgun. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'd say that's the case of season, like the second season, where she wasn't even meant to appear at that point. <laughs> She's just like, oh, here's a cameo scene of a girl you're not even meant to meet yet. <laughs> but for for the third season, like Rail, Railgun T, like she's really important for the plot. No, I I know that it's just. I guess I got to see more of her character in the main series to get used okay. to it, because a lot of it is I need to see how they play out. Because like I mean, at the same time in Railgun, you know that's where Mugino was introduced, and I immediately <laughs> hit it off of her. But I think it's how crazy she went back in the uh, main story that really determines how I feel about the character. So I'll just have to continue seeing like her backstory and how things play out. But I feel like, I don't know, maybe they leaned a little too hard into the cliches. <laughs> what cliches do you speak of? Uh, honestly, the whole like breast size thing. <laughs> I think they just yeah, that's went a, a little too hard on that silly side. That's a running gag with most of the girls in the series. I don't think that's a Misaki exclusive thing. I mean, look at Misaka, for example. She constantly... I mean, she had a bust up at arc in the same goddamn season. <laughs> <laughs> look, what, what saved that arc for me is the concept of the whole Dream Ranker cards and... Mr. Blue himself. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, good. I do still plan on reading more. I'm just saying that I'm I'm not certain about reading uh, Astral Buddy and um, mm. like her spinoff yet. I want to see her more in the main canon first uh, to see how I feel. And like I said, so far in the main canon, I think she's completely fine and th this stuff's completely out there sure but I was enjoying New Testament 11 for a bit I was vibing with it so um I'll have to see her character more it's just in terms of all the level 5s she's probably the one that I'm the least interested in just for right now um cause I mean even Kikine like had his crazy dark matter form and stuff with like clones and Mr. Beetle. And then Mugido doesn't get too many upgrades after uh, season three, aka Old Testament. But I mean, she still just does have some cool moments. Um, the regretful stuff with New Testament one and. I don't know, her interaction with Hamazura and honestly, even by Hamazura, raised my opinion of them. But, um, like, each of them have something big that makes me go, like, yo, that's crazy, and I'm glad to see there. I can see how they're contributing. Whereas Misaki, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not as interested in her power. <laughs> right, where do I start with that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah. Firstly, on the Dark Matter manga, we'll go we'll go back to that just for a second. It's only like one volume. You can read that pretty quickly, it's, and it's not like oh, Index, where a lot of people are put off by the, the series length. It's something that you can read pretty quick, and then you'll probably appreciate Kikina a lot more. And I think Lucas will agree agree with me on that. Definitely, it's only like. 30 minutes to read. Hmm. Yeah, you get through it pretty quickly. And yeah, you'll definitely have a better appreciation for the character. As for Misaki, <laughs> I think it was like intentional that you're meant to feel conflicted or neutral about her from her very inception. Because she's basically presented as basically the villain initially. But then it's, oh... There's a twist. She's not actually the villain. It's Gensei. Because all the problems point towards Misaki and then it goes, psych. No, it's not actually her. She's doing all the shady stuff because she's got some good intentions. And I think that's the whole point behind her character. She's morally ambiguous and people will judge her based on her ability because 
people find the fact that she can control others uncomfortable. And people are always thinking, oh, is she... Does she actually care about people she's controlling? Does she have a moral code? Does she have the capacity to form meaningful, healthy relationships with others? And I think that's the inner conflict of the character itself. If you know about, like, her history with Toma, she basically had to move on from that, and she felt that she was responsible for what happened to him, and she basically lost the love of her life, and then his basically had to move on from it and I feel like that's a, a story that perhaps people who have had someone close to them in their lives can relate to to some extent where they've had to move on from that but yeah I mean I, I am kind of relating to that event but like I said I gotta read further into New Testament 11 to see their full backstory because I saw their encounter and meeting and stuff um but I'm, I'm still reading through it. And like I said, by the time I get to the end of New Testament, my stance can completely change. That's that's the brilliance about um, me and the series, that my opinion will uh, possibly change a lot. We'll yeah. See, but yeah. I mean, for yeah, what I mean, you're saying... <laughs> I'm not saying everyone like needs her. to love me, Saki. Like, uh, I'm all for people having different opinions. Uh, I've got my opinion and... I know not everyone agrees with me and calls me names because of it. <laughs> That's just how, how it goes when you've got an opinion on the internet, especially when you put yourself out there a lot like me. But it, it's hard for people to deny that whatever your opinion about Misaki is, especially in New Testament, she has a complete character arc by the end of New Testament. From where she starts, well, I know she appears before NT11, but... You, you, her character arc essentially starts in that because you then understand what a deal with, is with Toma and everything and then by the end of it she gets a, a meaningful resolution and she learns from where she started and there's a bit of murky conflict in, in, in between that point as well but can you actually say that about the other heroines? Can you say that about Misaka? Misaka has a spike where she goes a bit Oh, I won't spoil, but she has a poten potential to change in NT15, and then by the end, she's dormant like a volcano that's not exploded in a thousand years. Uh, or Index, where she hasn't be had a presence in New Testament for the most part, and then by the end, she gets a bit of nostalgia from the Old Testament days where her character had a arc, in a way, from her relationship with Terma and how he lied to her. And then you got Offenus, who, yeah, her arc was pretty much concluded in <laughs> the Offenus arc, of course, with NT10, and then she basically acts as the sidekick. The other girls don't have. Have, a, have a meaningful character arc. Um, well, they, well, Offenus does, of course, but well, I'm talking about by the end of New Testament. Uh, I think Misaki, therefore, is standout, and I think... Even the Misaki haters will be hard to deny that. Does that mean we get no index character arc after Old Testament? <laughs> Come on. We, 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 might do we might do in GT10. I mean, I don't Rough know if you read the synopsis, she but she, she seems to be pretty important in GT10. So. <laughs> Honestly, I said before that index was another character that I was on, but... As I'm, like, going back through, honestly, Old Testament 1 and stuff, you know what? Screw it. I'm down for some more wacky index shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. I feel like Index in GT, I mean, I mean the character, not the actual series, she's had a bit more to do than where she was in early NT, I feel. In, like, you could probably forget Index existed in early NT and nothing would change apart from again the stuff in the Offenus arc where she does have a few moments to shine but apart from that like, can you guys remember what Index did in the early NT volumes before NT8? <laughs> <Robert, laughs> no. He waited in Thomas' room <laughs> and was yeah, exactly. and drunk. Exactly but in, in GT at least she's been okay she's not been the most important character but she's been productive at least she's been helping out to yeah. a decent extent. In GTS, 
that what she does is mostly off screen. It's important, but off screen. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. Um, that can be applied to a lot of the heroines as well. Yeah, to be honest, one thing I noticed in GT, a lot of the main heroines haven't really done. Well, I, I would say they've done stuff, but they've not been like the main focus. I feel like the main focus has just been transcendence for the most part. And I guess Kuroko and GT free, <laughs> but uh, but Kuroko is not even a main heroine. I'm talking about like Index, Misaka, Offenus, Shokuho. I guess Index and not not Index, uh, Misaka and Shokuho had a bit to do in like GT2, but then after that they've just had their occasional Misa Misa bait scene <laughs> in recurring volumes, and then that's been it. Misaka was also important in GT1. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was just like mostly slice of life stuff. I guess she did fight Maidono and Nyoka, which went disastrously. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about like a, ma like a major character focus. Because we did get character focus with Offenus and Shokuho in New Testament. And I guess Misaka for one volume in New Testament, apart from NT10, where she did the. Uh, the hug with Terma. <laughs> but well, in terms of like character long... moments, it's like... Mm. You can, if it was, it's not, I think, executed perfectly, but Misaki's actions in GT2 are... very unusual for and could be seen as like a big moment. Which moment are you talking about? I don't know if... Uh, the, the, fight, the fight, the fight that she much. has. <laughs> uh, the fight. Yeah... I guess, but I don't really see that as a major character thing. I don't know. Oh, hey, different opinion. <laughs> Nevertheless, looks like we've got GT10 and then Dark Matter event in Imaginary Fest or the tw 20th anniversary next month. Are we going to get anything else? Or will we get like an announcement of something and it'll be like, oh, you got to wait uh, until like the end of the year for it to happen? Because, yeah, if we, if we go off like the 10th anniversary for Index, we got like that uh, Kamachi PV thing where we got that an animation with Kamachi's other light novel series featuring for the first time. And I can't remember what else. And then we've had the Railgun 15th anniversary, which was like, oh, you've got a side story volume, which was a bit crap, not gonna lie. And then a Misaka <laughs> Shokuho figure, um, amongst some other little bits of random stuff. Are we gonna get like something substantial? What do you guys think? I think now is really the only chance where something could be announced. Mm. I'm not. I'm not too sure if something will happen since every time something could happen, it, there were loud words from uh, the editor Mickey and so on that no, no, nothing's going on. Yeah, we haven't had that lately though, which is interesting. I'm not going to say <laughs> it means anything to not jinx it or anything. yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but like two years ago, Gigak made a tour of JC stuff. Mm. where the CEO of the company mentioned that they have already been booked out for the next five years of anime productions. Yikes. Which in this case would mean that if NT is in production right now, the time frame would close in now. Yeah, I actually forgot about that, to be honest, because I have seen that video uh, a long time ago. Mind you, but... Yeah, it's crazy they planned that far, to be honest. It is wild. Although, I have been liking a lot of the animes they've been putting out. I just would like them to bring back um, Index. And honestly, I don't know what they do for the 30th anniversary. If it's not an anime, then I hope it's still some stuff that's big. But honestly... I would even be fine with more merchandise that's actually, you know, good and promotes the series 
And mm. if it's figurines, for the love of God, not swimsuits. Stop! Stop! W what we need <laughs> is the cool characters, please. Um, but ah. Uh, well, Misa Misa sells. Everyone loves just, Misa Misa, right, guys? You, we've got the <laughs> the stupid uh, fan fiction <laughs> side story web web series thing that's going on at the moment, which I haven't read yet, which I need to. <laughs> I heard that this is getting a light bubble. Like, really, really. Oh, is it? Is it actually yeah. getting published? Holy fuck. Was that announced? I read it on, was that just I read rumor? It on Twitter, like yesterday. Could be fake news, but I. It seemed for real. Yeah, that's something we've got to stay clear of, actually, because <laughs> April Fool's Day is also approaching, so. Oh boy, that's going to be a fun day for Tomorrow fans. There's going to be. Suzushina Yuriko and New Testament anime announcements everywhere. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to be honest, I could see that happening. I don't think that's too far-fetched to disbelieve, but yeah, I guess wait for an official announcement. Well, yeah, I just think that's crazy at the same time because yeah, it just feels like just having that as an actual published story would be kind of whack compared to what what they've actually released uh, in terms of like canon. That's the like supposed fight one in Academy City where they go crazy, right? Yeah, I still need to read it. I'm need to catch up. I uh, hopefully we'll catch up next week if I've got time. But time is limited. I still need to read that stupid Queen's thing, the the bonus with Mental Out. The ones where they're butterflies on the front or fairies, whatever. I, I read a bit of it though. Yeah, I'm I'm hopeful for some big stuff personally, because it's like, you know, 20 years is definitely a long time. And I think the mainstream audience that doesn't really read the novels they're definitely starved for stuff um for sure and like i don't know what they'll put out there i just hope it's something that revives a lot of interest in the series um if not there, there's always your channel i know just just doing its best um and I'm sure it's not an issue of funding, because, I mean, I don't know how much they get from the gotcha game, but I do know that they get funding from quite a few places. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that the Omnibus didn't sell as much as they hoped, because I did notice that it had a crazy sell on Amazon for, like, half price. We're talking 125 for that thing, and I'm like... It's criminal. That is absolutely insane. So, hey, if we got anyone else who hasn't checked it out, you have the perfect chance to pick up the Omnibus now. Last time I checked, it was um, criminally cheap. But, um... I might get a second copy, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with that price, I'm hoping some more people can pick it up. Especially when you consider how the original volumes can be very price gouged now. Um... But, yeah, I'm just hopeful that uh, the 20th anniversary brings some more people in and they can actually get the stuff going. But I mean, even aside from that, um, just getting more people into the, you know, light novels to enjoy what all of the testaments have to offer. Um, I I'm just hoping the 20th anniversary does stuff to motivate people to do that. We'll just have to see. Mm. Yeah, in regards to the omnibus, I think, I don't know. From my end, I, f I think it did do well, but I don't know if it's dropped off. And it just got a lot of copies um, and it's a, in like storage that it didn't sell. But yeah, from my end, because I did like the review of it and from what Yen Press told me, they said it did pretty well. Uh, and my the figures that I got from like my Amazon affiliate links seemed pretty good to me. Uh, I don't, well, I don't know what, I don't know what, 
their number was for like how many volumes or books they plan to sell or how many they actually produced. I have no idea. Uh, I can only go off what I've seen. And then, yeah, we got New Testament announced afterwards. I'll be, it was, I think it was pretty quickly after we got the Omnibus out when we got that confirmation. So, I mean, they must have a lot of faith in it considering, but we have been hammering their Twitter down for like the last few years, say, when are you releasing NT? And we, like from what I heard as well, like the rumors, it was that OT, not the Omnibus, but like the OT volumes didn't, didn't do well overall, which is why it took so long for NT to happen. And then the Omnibus kind of like reignited their interest to do it, I imagine. So I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, it is a, I do agree that it's a steal at the moment. If people do want to pick it up and if you want to help out the channel, make sure you use the affiliate links on my, on my videos. That'd be massive help. Yeah. And honestly, um, I mean, not to promote the Omnibus more, but it is a fact that, um, when I took it around to my relatives and stuff, every time they go like, what a crazy book like they never even read the series but just the literal awe inspiring just feel of the book itself just wows everyone who sees it and i'm yeah. hoping that that helps motivate people who see someone read the book to go hey maybe i should check that out <laughs> that's crazy and then when yeah. i tell them it's a collection of the entirety of like what was it 23 24 maybe even 26 24. volumes or something yeah um t when they hear that they're just like you serious <laughs> i still barely believe it's that many volumes i'm like halfway through uh, old testament one and barely entered the book <laughs> mm. yeah yeah i concur with that i mean i i've shown my family members it well m maybe not physically because they live quite far away from me but either from the video that I did or just pictures or if they have seen it in person then they're like pretty struck by it they're like that, that looks beautiful so yeah I think uh, people can relate to that as well when they bought it and their family members or loved ones do see it and this this talk is making me think I do need to get the second copy especially if it's like reduced and I, like, I don't know about Amazon UK but I, I I've seen it on Amazon US that it's reduced so hopefully I can get it a, a reduced price and then I can have one that I'll read and that'll take some damage and I'll probably have the other one which is just sealed and I'll won't touch that and just have as a collector's item. It's not a bad idea and I still theorize that, you know, eventually it is going to be one of those things that gets price gouged. I don't know by how much, but yeah. it does... It does feel like that, especially mm. because of its quality and stuff. Like... I, I could see it one day selling for the price of a new PS5. Like I, I could see it getting gouged that high. Mm, yeah, yeah. But like I said, I don't know how. I don't know if they're still manufacturing them or what, or if it's limited amount. Well, it, it must be a limited amount. They're going to stop making them at some point, <laughs> I, or they already have stopped and they've just got a lot of books in supply. I have no idea. I've not had those conversations, so I can't advise anyone on that regard. But. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably pick it up sooner rather than later. I, I think I'm, I'll be tempted to do so. I mean, my birthday's coming up, so I might treat myself to to one again. <laughs> Although I got I got the review copy, so I technically didn't spend any money towards it. But hey, I, I'll do it just because of the love of the series and as a insane collector. Even though I don't collect too many physical like novels and books now because I'm aware of storage and that. <laughs> and I've got a finite space where I live, but if it's indexed, I'll do it. <laughs> it's worth it. I mean, that's that's the other cool thing that you can do with uh, multiple copies or heck, even one copy. It's a decorative item. Like it is literally something that when it's on your shelf, it adds flair. So even beyond reading it, it is yeah. just an item that adds flair to your room that someone looks in, it's going to draw the eyes. It's going to draw attention. And I think that's awesome. Absolutely. That means that once they're finished with uh, New Testament, which 
will be ages away, but hopefully that means in the future two more omnibuses to come with it and complete a collection of grimoires. And if they oh my god, we're gonna be so old by then. Style, I know, but imagine the distinct style of each of them. Oh my god. <laughs> I think oh, the so old. took six I'm years too old to be already. <laughs> Actually, that would be the funniest thing. They just announced, like, hey, yeah, um, New Testament Omnibus, they, they put, like, a year down where it's coming out during the Annie. <laughs> that would be crazy. I doubt it. I doubt it. But, I mean, hey. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I would... It'd be so cool to get like New Testament omnibus as well, and maybe have it like I think I've talked about this before, stylized maybe like in a black or grey, which will contrast from the white of the Old Testament one. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. And then, yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna be like really far ahead in the future because it's gonna take a while for the Empress to do all the volumes for NT, unfortunately, and. Oh, we're all gonna get really old. <laughs> One day we will be able to read it to our grandchildren. Yeah, literally. That's probably what's gonna be the case. <laughs> Introduce index to them slowly but surely. I don't know. Slowly but surely, that doesn't make any sense. So slowly <laughs> but surely is what I meant. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just glad that now that New Testament's even coming out in English, um, English reading fans who wanted the official translation and stuff, and honestly, me, when I was originally trying to get into the sequel series and I didn't know about uh, Bakasuki, it's it's going to be really nice, and I'm just, I'm just glad that it's finally getting the love that it honestly deserves with how amazing New Testament is. That, like, that and Volume 2 basically coming out in a couple months. Yes. Like yeah. It comes out May. I'm hyped for it. I'm very hyped for it. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. Even though NT two is more of a exposition volume. I mean, it does have some action and funny scenes here and there, but it is quite a bit of a ex magic exposition type volume. But it's it's nice to have the free heroes interacting, like Hamazura, Accelerator, Toma. After it, my favorite volume, <laughs> volume three. You're the only person who thinks that. <laughs> Probably yes. Nah, I think all all the Hawaiian uh, index fans probably have it in high regard. Well, to be honest, Ophinus is is Hawaiian, and I can't remember his opinion on, on it. I think he's like thinks it's whatever. <laughs> Uh. Oh well. At least we'll get best president of all time soon. <laughs> he, he, if we had Roberto, Roberto in real life, he'd fix America. I'm not gonna lie. We oh, need him. I, I trust it. <laughs> I would. I, I would vote. Like half the time, I don't even know who to vote for. I don't want to vote for anyone. But honestly, Roberto. I'd vote for him in an instant. I think everyone would. You're just a fucking legend. <laughs> After seeing what he can do in GT4, there's no reason not to. Oh yeah, I mean that that was something else. <laughs> who could who could forget his iconic speech where he says, "I love sex." <laughs> it's America. <laughs> oh man. The man's determined, <laughs> and I respect it. He's an honest, honest politician, which is normally non-existent because honest politicians, they're, they're scared to be honest. <laughs> so they, they won't. And, and being dishonest is more advantageous. But Roberto's like, nah, I don't give a shit. What you see is what you get. <laughs> I'm an absolute mad lad. If you like me, then nice. If you don't, then fuck off. Well, yeah, I guess it drills home. 
uh, that the average Joe can become president with the American dream. I guess that's what his character's meant to be. You don't have to be some career politician like his vice president in the uh, GT4. And I think the contrast between them two is pretty good. I do, I do feel like, on, on a tangent, I do feel like Kamachi got quite political at like different points in GT, which is interesting. I've talked to it in, about like with Malcolm on the Toro podcast at, at certain points. Index we like is a, already. Index is already what? Index has always kind of been political, even back in OT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always had yeah, the magic science politics, which is I Toma guess more. Being... Yeah, that that and Thomas being hunted down by French protesters. Yeah, yeah, it's always had that emphasis on like religion, which I guess comes hand in hand with politics at times, especially if if you have like an a state or a huge organization like the Roman Catholic Church being in charge of religion and also having that much power and influence in the world. But yeah, I feel like OT was more like foreign policy, and I feel like maybe early NT was also like the like terrorism. I guess, yeah, OT was more about that dilemma bet between religion and state and then foreign policy, trying to trying to have that, what do you call it, appeasement to try and st stop a world war from happening, which is kind of like 1930s kind of stuff going on there. Uh, although you, d you didn't really have an ag aggressor state back then as you did with like Germany in the 1930s, but y you had like it's kind of like a Cold War conflict. I did make a video about this. It's, it's kind of like a cold, cold War where you get like two sides that basically pointing nukes at each other or the equivalent being, yeah, the world is descending into a catas cataclysmic conflict that could consume everything. Well, yeah, with GT, it feels like more like different modern day issues because we had like GT3, which was like police brutality which kind of tied in what was happening with America at the time. And I was like, am I the only one seeing this? <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to like bring real world politics into my videos, but it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing parallels. And then it's like uh, GT8, yeah, where, where Academy City got locked down. And it was kind of like <laughs> the lockdown uh, <laughs> across the world, which happened. And then I think there was the moment where they had like flu masks in that little shop that Aradia and Termo went into. And they were like playing, all, everyone was playing like these games and watching TV with these sublim subliminal messages from Academy City to keep everyone indoors. And I was like, this is oddly like the COVID lockdown, or is it just me? And it's like multiple instances, instances while I've read GT, I'm like, am I the one, is, am, like, am I connecting the dots right here? Am I, am I the only one seeing parallels between this? Or am I just imagining it? I, yeah, but I guess only people who read GT can make a comment about this, I suppose. If I actually have time, uh, especially because when I did start to read it, I was getting through the stuff very quickly. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, because um, a lot of stuff's been happening IRL, I won't go into details, but um, because of that, I didn't have a whole lot of time. So, hopefully, within this next month, uh, I turn things around, and when I do, um, I am planning on, like, binge reading uh, through the Omnibus and back through New Testament. And honestly, I think with just enough time, say I read, like, a chapter per night, I could probably reach Genesis Testament by next month. And then uh, be excited for whatever, well, I guess uh, GT10 coming out. <laughs> Challenge accepted. We will follow, follow your career of great interest, as Palpatine would say. Or something yeah. like that. I can't remember the exact quote. Honestly, for right now, <laughs> I'm just excited to get to the end of New Testament. The amount of hype stuff in New Testament is just wild. And I hope that Genesis Testament gets that crazy at some point, if it does not already. Hmm. Yeah, yeah it's you... confusing. 
most confusing? Once you get into late and T and GT, things become a lot more complicated. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree on that, yeah. I feel like because we didn't know a lot of stuff, because there were, were a lot of, I won't spoil it, but there were a lot of mysteries re revolving around, like, the Transcendence, for example, that have taken a long-ass time to be revealed, so there were a lot of un unanswered questions, and I, I suppose there still is to some extent. I guess there's a, there's a there's fewer of them, but we still need to find out some pretty important details about them. Hopefully, GT10 does that, because I do feel like this saga of arcs is coming to a end with GT10, because it kind of happened similar to how we had the Gremlin stuff from NT, and that ended at NT10 pretty much, and we moved on to the, the Magic Gods and the Kamisato arcs, so I, I have a feeling Kamachi will probably move on from the transcendent stuff with this arc, maybe, or this volume. Who knows? Which, that actually got me thinking. Oh boy. What will come out first? New Testament's Omnibus? Or Genesis Testament's Anime? Because <laughs> <laughs> thinking about the fact wow, that... Wow, that like, is... <laughs> that's the million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> Like, wow. realizing that New Testament's anime is who knows how far out, when I realized that, ooh, Genesis Testament's anime is even further out, I'm like, oh boy, Tuari's gonna be cooking for longer than One Piece. I, I genuinely think One Piece is gonna end before Tuaru finally gets to cook, and then it's gonna be like, Tuaru's the big shonen. It's the big dog now. Because, <laughs> I mean... With the source material, it's been kicking around almost, maybe not exactly as long as One Piece, but it's 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 been cooking in the background for about that long, and the, by the time it gets adapted into the anime, which I think it will at some point, it'd be criminal if it didn't, but, mm. like, I definitely feel it's just gonna be a, like, you know, every five years, oh, hey, look, Index is back. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think One Piece is like five or six years older than Tuaru. I can't, I can't remember the exact year. I think it's five, yeah. Five, yeah. Cool. But, yeah, <laughs> honestly, I guess it all depends what happens this year, because if we get like a New Testament anime, then that'll push things along nicely by the time yeah, Press finally stop yeah, doing the New Testament volumes. <laughs> but if not, then it's going to be like, oh. New Testament Omnibus might beat it out. And that would be a nightmare <laughs> scenario. Because come on. You, you, it, it's crazy. I don't know if you guys do this. But when I like go on Twitter and I see new anime season announcements like Dan Machi or Data Live. And they're all of, ahead of indexing seasons now. I'm like... How is this being allowed to happen? It's like, sh like surely these series can't do better than Index in terms of like the new season coming out. Surely if these established IPs can keep getting new seasons and it's not like, oh, this thing's new. We need to check it out as in it's never had another season before. If, if those series can do it, then why can't Index? And I know what people will say, or the the studio execs will say, in JC staff or Kadokawa or whatever, they'll say, oh, but Tararu's different because, okay, we are, we haven't had as many seasons of uh, of Index as we've had with, with some of its competitor series, but we've had three seasons of Railgun, and we've had one season of the Accelerator anime, and it's like... Oh, so we've had, we've had that. So technically, Tuaru's got more seasons than that. And it, it's... I get that Tuaru's this huge universe, but I feel like that's the wrong way to look about, about it because Index that's, is so important. It's the main that's series. The thing. Yeah, you got to treat it like you would the big it's show beast. in it. It's yeah. 300 episodes and stuff because that's just how yes. big it is. Especially because it's like, well, we don't know if it will sell. Bro, New Testament there's no way that anime fans will get hype with that even if it's handled poorly i yes. just feel like it is so good that even if you mess it up it's still going to be like an eight out of ten anime yeah yeah because yeah i mean 
the proof is in the pudding. If you look at my channel, you know, I, I released a new New Testament 9 video in January. I did, yeah, I wanted to focus more on Toma's inner conflict and that during that story. And it's for the, like the 10th anniversary of the volume. And look how well it's done. It's gotten over 200k views in like two months. And it's on track to be my, be my best performing Toaru video on my channel. It's, it's nearly ca caught up my Terma Powers video. People, well, anime fans, they, they love uh, gossip and talking about new shows. And they, they you know, stuff like ReZero. The reason why ReZero became so popular was because people were like, oh my god, look what's happened to Subaru this episode. Oh my god, I can't believe it. He's, he's, he's been torn to shreds or whatever. He's, he's, he's had a lot to deal with. He's, he's died like a billion times, whatever. <laughs> and those, those, those rumors, that those gossip, that, that kind of gossip spreads around. And once people, I won't spoil what happens to Toma, but once people realize that Toma's been through a lot in this this uh, story, they be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe what, what Toma, Toma's an established character. What, what what the hell have you done with him?" And then people are going to check out the series because of that. And I, f I, I feel like we... it's it's the proof is in the pudding. Like, look at my channel. Uh, people are interested in that, even if they haven't cared about Index in a long time. And I think what will really help New Testament's anime is I do think that um, New Testament, it, it does have a little break before like the big Othinus arc picks up, but I still think New Testament starts off so unbelievably strong that that will immediately get people to see, hey, this is, this is already different. Just the very beginning you can feel that difference and then going into like Baikama, the crazy dark matter shenanigans people are going to be hyped at that to like the cool effects and stuff hopefully and like i imagine if they animate those fights well oh easy especially with like how many level fives will be meeting up and fighting and stuff bro it's just going to be another railgun t but just right off the bat <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I hope so. <laughs> that, that would be the dream, wouldn't it? If it's actually directed as well as Railgun C. Uh, fingers crossed. What is scary kind of right now is that we are kind of reliving 2018 because, it, as you know, One Punch Man Season 3 was announced by JC staff. So if an empty anime would be releasing now, the same situation could exist where the A team, the good team of JC staff, does One Punch Man and the B team that's more... Uh, meh, would, could work on Index again. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Well, I guess the advantage NT anime would have over perhaps the other seasons of Toaru, or not, not Toaru, but Index, is that you don't, have to, you don't have to wait at all to get to Accelerator. And we all know how popular Accelerator is. At least when I watch Index, I cared about, oh, when am I going to see Accelerator next? Like, episode one of NT, you'll just get Accelerator instantly, while Index Season 1, you got to wait 10 episodes for him. Index Season 2, you got to wait, like, 8 episodes for him, or 7. And then, yeah, uh, Index 3, okay, he's got a little, little scene at the end of like, episode 3, but it's, like, episode 4 onwards. So at least you get Accelerator straight away without having to wait a few weeks. Not only that, but also because of... Um because of like toma's ambiguity in that volume i also feel that people are going to be very invested like what's up with toma since they know toma's still there but but they're going to be asking like you know where where's toma what's about this why why are they all like continuing on it, it feels disconnected as if the true main character of the series is absent and then like that build up to that return and, and just that anticipation um I don't know if you played Persona 5, so I won't go into detail, yeah. but they did some stuff like that with the main character where it was like left very ambiguous what's going on. And I feel like just like how that was really hype, I think Toma's reveal would be the exact same way. Really hype. I, I felt that feeling of like mystery and like, you know, what's going to go on, how his return is going to be handled in the book. So I imagine if, if they capture that same fill in the anime, 
that like it's it's gonna be super front loaded um and then they're gonna also start like introducing mechs into it which i mean not everyone's the biggest fan of mechs but it shows that the technology is catching up again so i mean i i think i think it would definitely bring hype back in for sure I know yeah it's, it's, it's pretty fun volume <laughs> yeah even without Toma. but i feel yeah that probably will leave people anticipating his return even though index season three spoiled that he's still around but to be honest it, it's impossible to market New Testament without marketing that term is around. I mean, you guess you could omit him completely, which would be an interesting choice, but I don't see them feasibly being able to market NT successfully without showing Toma. <laughs> Especially if they're like going into the Offenus arc territory when, when they, they tease it. Yeah. Yeah, when they show a post on there, it's just no Toma on there. Yeah, that, that'd be a brave decision, not gonna lie, but I don't think for marketing reasons it'd be a wise choice for like, people unfamiliar with what's going on. But yeah, we can only dream. <laughs> Praying for the good news. But yeah, if, if we get like, I don't know, a, a spin-off, if we get like a Sugita spin-off or something else announced, I'd be pretty happy with that. But I think everyone's going to be disappointed if we don't get some kind of anime. I feel like even if you get like um, Astral Buddy or Dark Matter anime in some capacity, he will be happy with that. But I guess there will always be some people disappointed because I think everyone just wants NT. I mean, it's not exactly that, but a smaller project that they could work on because they're like, hey, it's the 20th anniversary. So let's finally adapt the other important side stories. Like, you know, side story two with Gunha and Oleris to start getting him more into the limelight to build hype for yeah. New Test. Because that's not as hard as doing a full season. So just do like an ONA of that for OVA. Because, I mean, I, I think that's pretty reasonable. You don't, you don't need to go as crazy. And it starts making people go like, now hold up, Index is cooking again. And then it would give them time to cover a lot of the stuff that they skipped. But, yeah, who knows about that? I don't know how mm. they feel about making just small projects like that. Yeah, true. Hey, that's, that's an idea for them. I do think Mickey once confirmed that the only way for new Radiant content to be released is if new Index content is also released. Anime-wise. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, I, I think I heard that as well. Who knows? But yeah, I would have to like probably think about what I'm going to do if we don't get anything announced, because that's going to be... I mean, we will get something, it just depends what it, what it is. But if we get, like, next to nothing, that's going to be a bitter pill to swallow. And... If the imaginary fest cooks harder than the series as a whole... <laughs> that's a bro moment, know. yeah. That is a bro moment. Because at, at the imaginary the... fest be cooking. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. At least yeah. they won't have to cast new voice actors for NT. They already have them all. Oh, for sure. And, I mean, even if they don't fully do, like, a, a whole new thing, they can at least announce, like, hey, there are plans, and we're, we're cooking this stuff. Hopefully. I mean... Yeah, there's there's the idea that it's coping and all that, but I mean, I do figure that Index has been lurking long enough, and the anniversary I think is big enough that if they, if they're gonna go with some crazy shotgun reveals, this would probably be the time to do it. Put it put it back on the map for all the like randos. <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better term. Ah, uh, yes, there was a series called Index that once existed. 
Oh yeah, we remember the season three where when no one knew what was going on. <laughs> How could you possibly forget that? <laughs> yeah, but I, mean... I, I should probably do a recap of uh, not a recap, uh, index free explained in the minutes because I've done videos for season one and season two. So if we get season four announced, then I'll probably make that so people can understand what the hell happened. And like I said, even if people were put off by season three, they so they may be cautious, but I think there'd be just as many who are just like, OK, and like me are just looking through all the airing anime, happen to stumble across it. Remember that they did watch it um, and then just see hopefully how much better it is than Index three and start to get invested again, because I think just even off rip it'll give a different vibe than season three and that would make you go like oh let's give it a chance and if it has enough hype on its own it'll start convincing people to rewatch it to try and understand which could even bring people to like your channel to um understand like what's going on because I mean, people are still going to be confused with that heck i rewatched it twice or three times now and i still barely understand what's going on <laughs> but um yeah it should definitely like if they do it it'll bring interest back in i'm sure but it's it's all the game of gambling and ifs yeah like true true very best pulls. <laughs> yeah I might have to consider making like another channel where I just do like general anime stuff because yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how long I'd be able to keep just making videos about Toma or the level fives because those seem to be what's always popular. I mean, I can do I can do a lot more of them, uh, but depends what my aspirations are, I, I suppose, if I want to appeal to more anime fans or whatever. So I, I probably want to keep this channel you know, Tsuaru focused because I don't I, I don't want to ruin it and make it into something else. I kind of experimented with other content and it's hit or miss at times to deviate from the formula. I guess if it's like you can it's somewhat relevant to Tsuaru, then it's not too bad. Or I can do like a fusion of Tsuaru and another anime series, but yeah, it's something to consider, even though I don't really enjoy other anime series as much it, uh, I, I do i do like some but i'm not a huge fan of seasonals so maybe i'll just be a bitter seasonal anime reviewer that hates everything <laughs> maybe there's some novelty in that become the critical drinker of anime and just subtly be hinting worse than index <laughs> just like what's index oh, check out my other channel <laughs> yeah but then they'll, they'll watch the index anime and be like what the fuck is this <laughs> you said this is good <laughs> I'd be like no read the books the books are better read the books the read the books you the uneducated modern, um, peasants yeah to get the you know modern kids with it which I think is hilarious. I don't just attribute this to Index, but I was really bad at English growing up. I'm looking through a lot of my, like my past reports that uh, they made of me, like the school teachers and stuff as a kid. And bro, you be looking at that plus my IQ test saying I got a 99. Like y you would think I'm dumb, like real dumb with that stuff. And especially with reading and all that, but I'm actually not that bad. And what got me back into it and me being such a literature freak now, honestly, I say that I only have three series, which well, it's more than most people, but it's less than truly devil or dedicated novelist. Unless you include visual novels, then I guess it's more. But Index is a big one where it's like, <laughs> I have that book, and that's honestly getting me back into reading. So, I mean... Yeah, it's good. If people are on the fence, it's, it's a good way to, you know, if you enjoy reading or 
want to try and reading since source material is almost always mm. better. And next, and next does it. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely made me start reading more than I normally would. Uh, even though I've always enjoyed reading, I kind of stopped doing it as much in my late teens as opposed to my early teens. But yeah, I feel like Index is one of those series where you're always looking forward to the next book when it's going to come out. And it kind of like gives you something to look forward to in a year when you know there's going to be a new Genesis Testament volume coming out or New Testament back in the day when it was coming out. I'd always think, oh yeah, that's a, that gives me something to look forward to in, in, in this particular month or in the foreseeable future. And it does brighten your day when you have a bit of a crap uh, moment in life or whatever. Yeah, I, I just know that for me, I had always been desiring fulfillment, even when I pretty much only watched Index before Railgun T came out. Even when I got to the end of Index 3, and hey, maybe I'm um, kind of an exception and one of the only fans that will say this, but even after that towards the end, I still wanted more. I was still like, Sure, I don't understand everything, but I still enjoyed season three, and I still think its openings and endings are bangers. And I was like, I, I still want more. And then, like, I, I couldn't find more because the single series wasn't translated and stuff, and mm. uh, I hadn't tried out the original, so I unfortunately fell off the series for a little bit. Then came back for Railgun T and went, Oh my god, this is so hype, I want to continue this again. And then went, you know, off. And then I already said my story before about coming in, and I'm like, okay, I'm full diving in, and I do not regret diving into the novels. Oh my goodness! But it's, I don't know. I feel even with Index Season Three, um, that I, I was still able to get hyped at the concept of more. And between, you know, New Testament and Railgun T, between those two. They cook. <laughs> they for sure cook. Mm. True. More reason to get that anime. <laughs> so the anime fans are yeah. crazy. Actually, go. Yeah, it's 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 crazy how they just haven't given it the love that it deserves. And fingers crossed, they decide to put some actual faith in Index and treat it as well as they do a railgun and give it the time and love and attention and care that it, it does need and if it does that i'm not saying index will be the most popular series but it'll be seen of as more fondly by general anime fans than it is at the moment yeah and i i really don't like always bringing it back up but it's just it's, it's how much faith i have in it I would just like to directly tell the execs, and I'm like, this is is a golden egg. I don't know if it'll ever be unlike, um, for an example, uh, well, we'll just go to the gaming industry. I don't know if it'd ever be a Halo in its heyday, but yeah. I still think it would be like one of those, probably like Elden Ring, that makes you look and go, ooh, something spicy's here. I, I definitely think so. Yeah. The problem is, I mean, it, it just gets judged for something that it appears on the outside as. What I mean by that is it looks like a generic fantasy harem sci-fi series on the outside. I mean, it's because Kimachi did delve into some of the tropes at the time, but at the same time, he developed a lot of those tropes himself that other light novels have then copied afterwards because Index was very influential for its time. It's still but, wild if you're an anime. Yeah. Only, you wouldn't know that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's only it's only like um, you get like the JoJo fandom when when the JoJo anime remakes started coming out with with uh, David Productions and that that people started to like them because they, they were wacky. But some people criticized them. Are oh, they a bit? like generic and that they're a bit 
cliche in a way, but it's like, oh wait, JoJo is actually from the 80s and it was inspired by all the 80s action heroes and Fist of the North Star and all that, so it was actually quite uh, revolutionary for its time and then inspired a load of series after that. And Index is kind of similar, but I guess there's not, not always been the presence of Tuaru fans to sh shout enough about it that then the general anime fans are like, oh, okay, Index is actually quite a classic by modern standards in terms of how light novels are at the moment. My God, changed a lot since uh, when Index came out with all these isekai and web novels coming out and being adapted into anime. But yeah, if, if you just look at Index, it is a special series, whether people disagree how good it is because some people say, oh, it's a masterpiece. Uh, while acknowledging its flaws, because every series has got flaws, but some people are like, oh, it's 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 okay, it's not that great in terms of like the novels, but they still like say, oh, it's got some good ideas here and there, it's got some good content, it's just not consistent. While I would argue it is pretty consistent for what it is, and Kamachi is a genius for <laughs> some of the things he comes up with, and that's the whole point, because what, whatever your opinion about light novels is, or about Kamachi's writing, you can't deny the man has some incredible ideas and some of the stuff he does in his arcs are bloody fantastic. And it's hard to find other series that get to the same peaks when Tuaru is at its own peak. When Index goes into the World War Three arc or Arthur's arc, it's hard to find another series that has the same level of, of, of um, greatness, in my opinion. And there's just so many people that won't get to experience that because they perhaps don't know about Tuaru or they're put off by certain aspects of it, whether that's the fan service or they just see it as a generic series. And I do think Giguk did a lot of good work in terms of making that video about it and saying, oh, it's not. like I was a person who judged Tuaru that was, yeah, I thought it was quite generic, but then I grew to appreciate it. And then I, I, I he, kind of understood what Kamachi was trying to do and then maybe the anime's not delivered it best as it can and that's probably what I tried to do try to do in my videos try and highlight those aspects which get overlooked by like the average anime fan yeah the best way I can put it and what I think Index really needs is like a revitalization of it or like a retry with a better presentation because the way I feel about it is the same way I feel like Persona, where it's not the biggest thing, but it is such a classic and is so special in its own way that if you yeah. lean into that, stylize it like they did Persona, I genuinely do think Tuaru could get the love it deserves. They just need to lean more into it. But yeah. I absolutely agree. It's got a cult following. It and it is special. Whether you love it completely and you don't mind the flaws, or you're conflicted about it, Tuaru is special. It, it's got something about it. I, I think, it's like the Fate franchise, but a bit smaller. It's got this cult following where you're either going to be batshit obsessed with it. <laughs> like me and some of you guys <laughs> or people listening in uh, or you're just going to be like nah it's not for me and then just walk away but the, the people who stick around always just become hardcore cult like members of the community and it's rare to find a series like that and it's it's not just that it's made by Kamachi because honestly like I um, enjoyed Heavy Object, but not even that just had the same feel that Tuaru has, and that's why I'm like, oh, th this does have the special things, because I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll give some of Kamachi's other works uh, another try, but it just it didn't capture the same feel Tuaru does, where literally anytime I come back to Tuaru, I have a good time. Always. <laughs> And, hey, I'm not usually a big gacha player, and I, and I still don't think Tuar is the best got it has the best gacha game ever, but it does what I think it needs to do, and, like, 
even that got me into it and then yeah sure i intentionally wanted to dive deeper in but you know it's so as we're saying it has a feeling of depth and expansiveness that just you don't feel in a lot of those series that comes out more where it's always like something more is lurking beneath the surface like you can enjoy the surface level stuff you can play the halo games but there, there's more depth to it and um i definitely feel like this is one of those series that does it and another series that has that kind of depth although um if you ask me has been screwed over a bit as well is um the science adventure series now um they started as visual novels as opposed to light novels and there was a few different series in there but what i find most interesting is the one that they gave the opportunity to shine is steins gate and guess what that's considered the third best anime of all time on my anime list they allowed that one to cook but yep. they didn't allow the other entries in the series, like the Chaos entries, which I personally find um, Chaos Child in particular to be better than Steins Gate. And they completely shafted that. They gave it 13 yep. episodes. They didn't give it enough time to actually work properly. And they butchered it from the source material so much, like mm. Index, that I was like, well, no wonder it doesn't get respect. But if they properly made each of the science adventure series entries like if they gave it as much respect as they did steins gate they'd all be top and i feel like index is the same way where yeah it was just never given the opportunity that it should have had it was never given its funding its backing it's it, it was always on the back foot where it's like well maybe this will blow up instead of you know taking that gamble and leaning into it because just like those series and just like how steins gate was able to be top when it was given the proper treatment i do feel like index and especially a new testament anime will get that it just needs to get that backing and honestly if that means waiting another two years for it but it actually gets the proper treatment so that the fandom and like outside give more respect to the series to motivate them to honestly do an old testament remake or something like that like i i would rather that as much as i want like a big anime or a big explosion i want it to be able to get that treatment steins gate got i want it to get the love that these other series got because with that and with the source material Bro, it'd be up there like the new season solo leveling. It it, it just needs that opportunity to cook. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a good comparison to make between yes, yeah, Steins Gate and its uh, sister series because I've I've seen Chaos Head, and <laughs> not gonna lie, that was a complete mindfuck, <laughs> and it, it did feel really janky at times. And I, I I'm aware that people say. The visual novel or whatever for Chaos Head is a lot better. Yeah. But for the anime, it was like it makes, very it makes bizarre. Sense. This, yeah, this it was, stuff actually makes sense. The ideas proposed yeah. are really good. And you, you could feel the love for it. I still think Chaos Child is better than Chaos Head. But I do really like a lot of the concepts. And when you realize that it's all in the same universe as Steins Gate, that's the expansiveness. That's the like railgun to index feel yes and they just didn't yeah. give it an opportunity to cook and so will there ever be a robotics notes anime i don't know i think robotics Isn't there one notes, already maybe there was but i yeah i think there is <laughs> but yeah i don't know how don't know how good it was cause not many people talk about it i mean robotics notes is one of those where i think even the source material was okay but i mean even still like it just definitely deserved that and i know that personally um persona chaos child and index as well as halo like those were the big series that actually had an impact on my childhood all of them i think in their own way 
were able to do monumental things that you couldn't find anywhere else. And that's that's, that's why I think it, it needs that chance. Where else are you going to see, like, basically a crazy science as for power system scaled off of, like, the numbers or the, like, level stuff? How often you see Academy City? Sure, there's been a ton of other animes where it's like, it's an Academy City, and I always go, index reference? <laughs> but it's not, it's not the same. And especially with like the magic gods and stuff, you may find similar stuff, but I don't think I've seen a series with like the exact same feel, vibe, or anything. And like even the powers themselves, they feel so unique and like so their own thing that makes me go, it's it's another Jujutsu Kaisen, you know? It's it does something that nothing else does. So why hmm. doesn't it get its love? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, the comparison is very apt because they are, those series mentioned are all in the same universe and there's spin-offs and that. And one, one, or one of those uh, particular entries has received all the love and attention and the other ones have not, which is strange. But going back to like your point a while ago about how you can dig deeper into the Tsuaru franchise and you gain that greater appreciation for it as a result. And also hearkening back to what I've said about how it's perceived by others uh, in terms of like non Tsuaru fans or people who don't care about it. I think it's, ironically, it's a theme of Index that has being pretty consistent and I think it's one of the main themes of the entire franchise or at least for Index that there is a difference, difference between perception and reality and it applies to so many things in the series. It's, it's actually crazy when you think about it. For example remember what like Alistair said to Fiamma about Margin Breaker? He said, oh you are Something along, along, along the lines of you only saw like the surface of what a Magic Breaker was, but you didn't really comprehend what it was within. You say something like that. I can't remember the exact wording of it. You probably know what I'm talking about. Because um, you you only saw it as an ability that can destroy illusions when, when it's concealing something greater in. And it's similar to how Academy City is appears something on the surface while you have the espers and then the dark side of Academy City underneath and the imaginary number school district. It can be applied to so many things in the series, but how it's perceived versus how it actually is inside or the reality of it. Index as a character, you see her as Index the Grimoire Library on the outside, but on the inside, she's she, she is an actual person instead of an object like how the church treats her or... How, how she appears like an innocent girl on the outside, but then has John's pen mode inside her. <laughs> you, you, you can say it with so many things about the series, like Accelerator, he appears as the strongest Esper on the outside, but on the inside, he's quite a vulnerable person that just wants a family and love. It goes on and on. Even the Transcendents now. The Transcendents, I won't spoil about them, but they, they appear at one way on the outside, but inside they're completely different. It's, it's a theme that constantly happens in the series and it's ironic how it also applies to how Index as a series is perceived as well. That is so true. <laughs> the anime yeah. is the surface and the rest of the iceberg is, is the novels. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's not something that people bring up that I've, I've noticed from yeah just thinking about it. I feel like there's a lot of stuff in Index that just don't get attention, even even from the, its own fans. Because I feel like the series is so dense and vast, it's hard to pinpoint every theme or everything that Kamachi could be going for. And I think that's the beauty behind it, and where you can basically go down an infinite rabbit hole and study it as intensely as the Bible, and then come away with a different meaning from it. And I think... Um... That leads me into like another point of something that I like about it that 
I didn't originally realize was as there. As much as there is the, like, Toma main character syndrome, sure, to some extent, it's tied to the actual world building itself. It's not there for some BS reason. And it's been proven that even without Toma, there are plenty of other characters that have opportunity to shine. Railgun is a perfect example where when the universe is so rich, you can literally divert from the main character and still even a Suchu Mikado focused story or the other level fives or even a magic god or even Alistair as being like a protagonist. Um, like you could literally focus on almost any character and still enjoy it just as much. And then even like the main character with his powers, you know, as you said with a magic breaker, there's even more depth to him. There's unknowns about like everyone and every character and every story that it's you not only feel depth, but you can literally explore any corner and go, wow, th this is this is great. And not a whole lot of series, especially with like an overpowered main character can do that. Sure, Toma's overpowered, but he ain't the only one. The whole verse is insane in, in a lot of places. And there are yeah. a lot of places where Toma gets bodied because he just he doesn't quite reach that power scaling. And it's like, well, he does have some with the depth, but at no point does it truly feel like the world revolves around him. Whenever it does, it's because someone else is intentionally doing that. And then in that case, it's not that the world revolves around him. It's more like he's a pawn in someone else's game and scheme yeah. for them to take control. And when it's looked at that, like he, him being basically a figurehead, it goes, yeah, he's super important for sure, but he's not the only player. He's not the only key individual, and you would lose a lot of that depth if it was just about Tom. And the fact that you have, like, the three main protagonists of the main series, and then the protagonists of basically the spinoffs, it, it testifies to that. And that, that was even the whole theming of Volume 1, how, like, you know about Toma's journey and, like, his importance. And he is important. But don't shrug off these other characters. Their journeys are just as important. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like each character in the series has a moment to shine, even if you disagree about Kamachi's uh, way of handling them, where he introduces new characters in favor of the universe rather than uh, keeping many established I mean, characters. But, you even uh, convinced me with like some of the one-off characters that I disliked. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, I'm, I'm glad I did. Yeah, you can't just <laughs> be on Joe. Come on, re read the novels. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's important. Everyone has the time to cook, which is what I, I like about it. But uh, I'm gonna have to do. Uh, sorry to be abrupt, but yeah, we're gonna do, gonna do Q and A uh, now, and after that we'll bring things to an end unfortunately so I'm running out of time That's you. You need your sleep. You need, you need your sleep. <laughs> I'm getting kicked out because I'm, I'm, I'm in a different place I'm not usually here I'm uh, at my family's place for Easter I wouldn't normally be which is why I'm not in that little uh, room in the, in the loft I have uh, moved out so I got a nice flower around me but even, on, even when I'm on family duty, I always have time for YouTube and you guys, of course. Gotta... Gotta make sacrifices. Uh, but yeah, I hope everyone's having a good Easter as well. If you celebrate it or not. I but mean... In Britain. I, I should. I, I, don't, I don't know how Lucas's stuff is going most of my issues are just from prior issues and setbacks so mm -hmm. honestly I i'm vibing things things are starting to mm -hmm. go well hopefully hopefully lucas is having a good time as well and i'm good i'm graduating next month i'm going to france next week i'm chilling oh nice Ooh. congrats sounds very spicy oh that that is one good thing that i will want to share with everyone 
maybe some uh, screenshots in the Discord. Um, here soon, I will start renovating my house and my room and like theming it. And I'm, I'm gonna make the, my room look beautiful. And that's definitely gonna help my mindset. Mm. I'm going for like um, a spacey theme now. So nice. I'm gonna be cooking so with that. <laughs> So yeah, we'll limit it to one question per person, guys. So if you have a question you'd like to ask me or all of us or anyone in particular, like Lucas or Void, then please send them now. But remember, one one question per person because we don't want to give everyone like one person just can answer, uh, send like a billion questions and then just get all the attention because that's not really fair on the others. Um, so yeah, I know often it's asked one like really early, so we'll start from there. Uh, question for the Q&A. Why are you such the Riz Master? I can't believe people call you the Master Rizard. <laughs> that, that was you. That was you, I'm afraid. Oh, thank you, Offness, for the kind words. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm alright. I, I do what I can. It's, whether I succeed or fail, it doesn't matter. Because you got to take some losses to get to the goods. Is Alistair would imply because he fails all the time to get to the finish line or tries to <laughs> I'll say this I, I think why uh, why I look at you in aspiration and stuff it's just your dedication I you're much more dedicated than I feel most people are or would be and I do find that inspiring so that's that's my own oh, opinion very kind. why you got there <laughs> Very kind. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I mean... I have noticed that... Yeah, there's not been as many Tararu YouTubers. I mean, uh, there have been that have come and gone. Um, some people have tried to experiment and do some content. But it is about... Whether it's Tararu or not, just... Finding something you can dedicate yourself to and staying consistent. And yeah, I, I do it out of love for X. I could have done some other popular series instead, but I appreciate, you know, Tower a lot more, and it's my favorite series. Uh, but yeah, it's just about patience, and obviously, I've got goals and, and dreams, and I'm sure you do as well, and anything it's about. It's taking it day by day, because I think if you think about your future and you, you can and set certain goals or expectations of yourself then that can have a negative impact on you overall and i think that's that's affected me in the past where i've just lost sight of the present and focused too much on what where I, what i should be or what i want to be but it's about thinking Taking a step back and thinking, reflecting and thinking, how lucky am I? How lucky am I to have nearly 30,000 subscribers? And how lucky am I that all you guys are watching and, and appreciating what I do? It's, it, you, sometimes you can lose sight of that because you're thinking about, oh, I, I want to be at 50K or 100K. And it's like, it's the greed and it's, it's not good for you. So if I, if I could give anyone advice for people, not just YouTube or any goals or aspirations in life, just take a moment day by day to reflect and think about, what can I do in the present? What, what can I do to better myself? And and um, how can I improve day by day? And if you take those baby steps, then by the end of the year, you're going to be in a good place. So hopefully that helps people. If, if you have any goals or dreams or aspirations for the future, I feel like that help. Yeah, I'll stop blabbering on about that. <laughs> no motivational talks allowed. <laughs> All right, next question. Can we go edits? When is the new video and what will it be about? So it's going to be the Toaru lore. I'm doing a full history of Toaru, like before the series started. Uh, mostly like the, the, the big events in the series, not like the small scale stuff, but yeah. The stuff that's really important, that video is going to be like 20 minutes long or just under. So hopefully you enjoy that. So it's going to be like the, the videos which I did before, but a lot, lot better. Yeah. Celestial Dolphin 8 how would you rate your W's on a scale of 1 to 10? <laughs> what do you mean W's? 
What W's are you talking about? I don't know. Do you guys know what he's talking about? I'm guessing your vids that like, like your top performing vids. What which ones would you rate above the others? That would be my guess. <laughs> the most recent ones, because my old stuff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it's always nice for my videos to do well, regardless of the quality, but yeah. I've, yeah, I've, I've just... I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the best video editor of all time, because I'm obviously not. I'm very amateur still. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't want to say amateur. I'm, I'm okay. I'll probably give myself a pass. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I'd say... I'm a lot more improved than how I started. I think that's pretty obvious. So yeah, I'd probably give anything that I make now like an 8 out of 10. <laughs> and anything that's a year or older, like a 5 or a f less, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'm too harsh on myself. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Mark Spooner asks, What will happen if you're trapped in the anime world of Tuaru? Uh, depends where I am, if I'm in Academy City or in some random country or in a church. Hopefully I'm okay though, and I don't die. <laughs> Kamachi never kills, so. What was that? The best choice is to move to South America or Africa. Yeah, yeah, because nothing goes on there apart from like Mexico where the, where the return of the winged ones at probably. Don't live in Britain, don't live in Japan, you should be fine. Basically that, yeah. I just be America with a good president. <laughs> Why not? Maybe get to the sun. Cameron asks, uh, does heavy object get better? Fell off at volume seven. I'm not sure. I haven't read it. Have you read it, Lucas? They haven't. Okay. Only Malcolm has. <laughs> I don't know, Void hasn't either. Um, yeah, I just watched the anime and I think it's, I think it's okay. <laughs> Do you have any more questions? Um, Piero Colombo, not a question, but appreciate you guys and the fandom. Thank you very much. Very kind. Phoenix Song 38. Um, what Esper power do you wish you had? For me, mental out, <laughs> so I can basically do what I want. <laughs> And no one would know. Ha 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 ha. Evil. <laughs> Control everyone. I think it's got free holidays, free money. Just get everyone to do stuff for me. Be brilliant. <laughs> the obvious choice. Dark matter? No, I. Well, dark matter would also be nice if it's like the awakened dark matter. But. Usually, you don't really need the power, it's just there. Pause. Death mm. and destruction. Hmm. Um... Well, I, I guess I already said too much how much I like Meltdowner, so... I guess I would do the crazy funny particle beams. <laughs> I said I like her power too much, so... <laughs> I, I say I'm walking in with that one. Cool. Where are we at? Um, Azure Rain or Azura Rain? I don't know how you say the first bit. How do you get such a beautiful beard? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm lucky because my yeah the, the men in my family or my my brother he has got a good beard, so I guess it's just genes and. I don't, well, I used to use like some hipster beard shampoo stuff but <laughs> as a gift or whatever, but I don't always use that. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but even before that, I didn't use it, so it, it, I guess it all comes down to your genetics and if you're lucky or not, so. Sorry, I can't help you. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky boy. Oxymoron asks if you are planning to do short video summaries about magicians in the same way you did for the level 5 espers. Maybe some characters, but not all of them. Maybe I do like Offerness, maybe... S style... Not sure. 
I'd probably do for one for Orphanus. I have to think about the others, though. Were you trying to say something, Void? Yeah, I always just like, yo, Birdway? <laughs> I, I think Birdway is uh, one of the ones worth it. Maybe Cinderellon for me. <laughs> I think there's a few good ones you can do. At least ones that are, like, plot relevant. All right, we'll do like two more questions. Uh, what? All right, Clash Regal. When's the twentieth anniversary? It's tenth of April, which is next month. And Accelerator Lucci is asking a qu curse question. Aeon, what if Miska has a crush on crush for you? Uh, I mean, she wouldn't because she has a crush on Terma. And if she did, I'd be like, go away, please, because. You're in middle school, and I'm a grown-ass man. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, thank you all for watching. It's been a fun stream. Uh, hope you all enjoyed. And thanks for coming, guys. Uh, hope you had a good time on the stream. And hopefully we get Shiro in next time. And yeah. Any parting words? wonderful evening or morning or whatever the time might be. A... And Void? Can y'all read more of the books? <laughs> enjoy Index more. I don't care how you do it. Just, just enjoy yourselves. Read Index. That's not a request. <laughs> cool, cool. Alright, yeah. Sorry for the abrupt end, but thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully the 20th anniversary has a lot of good stuff. Uh... Cool. Fingers crossed. Only time will tell. But yeah, thanks for watching.